is the latest incarnation. We have the pump. We have our a 90 degree to make it flat. That then goes off around back in. That then goes into the oil cooler. Out of the oil cooler to the filter housing through the top like it should be. Into the turbo. And out of the turbo. And back in. But yeah. Going well. <laughs> Those tiny little wires from this little 8 amp charger. But I mean, this pump is 45 amps. Yeah, when you turn it off, it fills right back up again. I guess that's why it's got a maximum mark about here. On the other side. But this distance from from here to here would put this too close to the floor, so that's where this comes in. Is I'm going to have to severely protect this and this from heat from that turbo because that's going to be quite warm. Turn it off again. And that's not all coming from, from this because it's not a great deal. I need to know if I can reduce this level to here and then turn it on. Every single time do you want to work outside, does this happen? Unbelievable. Okay, so now I need to simulate heat. And I guess the biggest area for warming up would be the ow, oil cooler. Quite hot, that. So I'm just going to run it with that on. See so if I can get the oil hot and uh, see if I can record a temperature. After a few minutes of running, we've got 44 psi at the turbo. That says 40 degrees, but it, it only starts at 40 degrees. So I'm not sure about that. Now after an earthing issue, it says 44. Our oil pressure's going up. I've had the oil pressure at the turbo at about 60 something PSI before. So 
so that's not such a big issue. 45 degrees. So the next step of making it better, I've chopped the exhaust to the turbocharger there so I can spin the wastegate to there and it was down this side. So with it up there, it's out of the way of road crap which is the other thing I wanted. And I've now got lots of room for activities here. That will now fit in to this space up to about there. Excellent. I've also been going through the wiring because now I don't need all that big fuse box I had before. I just need one relay, uh, wideband controller, and the two temperature and oil pressure sensors. And uh, the main feed here will just go via the relay to the motor somewhere here. And to get that nice clean cut through that, I used this tool here, a little chain cutter. It's a bit like, you know, you do copper pipes. You can just use a little thing that, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> well, it works the same on that. Gives you a nice clean, say clean, gives you a nice cleanish cut. So I've just got to uh, re weld that in that position. LS400 comes with a sub standard. We're running again. One relay. <laughs> One large glove. I will explain that. Pump. Turbo. A mess of wiring. Oil filter housing. PSI. We're back on again. Briefly. Okay, so I stripped the whole thing out completely. I cleaned it all up with a wire wheel on a grinder and cleaned it with caustic stuff. And now, I just put the acid in. So the acid should clean all that up. Uh, and when that's dried off, I'll just paint it all with some of that stuff. And then I can put it back together properly for the last time. I'll get it all painted in here. I need this space, that width, so I can get my jack in there still. And that's, that's pretty much my boot trunk space. A bit there, a bit there. I'll, I'll board that over as well, so that's, they're flat over that side, so I've got some like storage area. But storage isn't what this is about really, is it? Had a few scraps of metal left over. So I've made that frame. It's not the squarest thing in the world, but it'll fit in here. And I can sheet it over. Function over form, I'm afraid. So I've chucked that in. The original trim's back in. I've got this sheet alley, which is very thin and flimsy. Um, 
I made a frame that's going to sit in there. Just out of scrap that I had. In the case of putting it back together, the quiet side of the exhaust goes back in first. Sorry about the wind noise. I've, I've had this off, I welded up a couple of spots that was leaking, namely just, <laughs> just down there. Funny enough where that line is. So that's that back on. Taking off the, uh, taking off the cutout motor because I don't want to get it damaged because it's pretty fragile. So that's the first part. Then next part is the exhaust to the turbo from under there. So that's the next part of the exhaust on. To the turbo. I don't know what to call that piece. Maybe it's a bit of a brace. I don't know. But it holds the uh, the back of the pump up, just steadies it a little bit. Gives it a bit of flex. And the pump's bolted through the floor down there. And that's the pump in. And the next bit is the uh, exhaust cut out and the post turbo loud side tailpipe. And next is the oil filter housing, the oil pump itself, the turbo, and I made a little heat shield for the um, for the motor for the electric cutout. So you can see how the, the turbo gravity drains back into the reservoir through the cap. There's a uh, a barb in there that screws into the cap. Okay, so after a very spirited drive and a couple of boost spikes up to 9 PSI, I've come back to check it out. It's hot, that, that is hot. Heat shield is hot. Everything's hot. I think the excess smoke is down to the um, extra heat wrap that I've put on that's not fully cured yet. But this is where the problems start. We've got oil being pushed out of the reservoir, out of the cap. I think we're getting pressure in the reservoir. You can see it running down the top of the neck. I have to forgive my makeshift heat shield. It worked though. Many cable ties make light work. You can't see it very well, but it is it is coming out there. So once again, it's time for the turbo bypass pipe while I fix yet another problem. So that's the five minute turbo removal. Easy to do. This is my problem. We're getting pressurized oil in this reservoir, pushing it out the cap, down the side and out. Got to fix that.